Assalamualaikum and good day. Welcome to Operation Management Course. I am Dr. Ahmad Yusuf, an Associate Professor in Operation Management. By taking this course, Operation Management, you are expected to be able to understand the nature of operation, to know the activities involved in managing the operation, and also to be critical in examining the operation issues and provide appropriate suggestions. The last one, you are expected to solve theoretical and practical problems using factual approach. Before we go for detailed discussion, let me briefly explain the basic concept of operation. To make it simple, operation is referring to the all activities involved in the production of goods and services. Let's start with one example. A smartphone, for instance. What are the basic requirements to produce a smartphone? First requirement is raw materials. We should have, for example, uh, like a silicon, plastics, irons, and some electronic parts and components. Other than raw materials, what else? The second thing that we require are machines, robots maybe, and workers as well. So in operation, the raw material, machines, and workers are basically uh, the inputs. Next, when all inputs are ready, they will be processed by certain procedures or methods. This is the stage we call transformation process, where we transform all the inputs to become something functionable and has value added. And lastly, once the transformation process completed, we produce end product and it is ready for the customers. So this is a complete view of operation. We have inputs, transformation process, and the output. At a micro level, an operation manager has to manage three, these three stages. The area of concern in managing the inputs are for example, quality issues, sourcing and purchasing, supplier selection, and inventories. In transformation process, some critical decision has to be made related to type of process, type of layout, capacity planning, scheduling, inventory, work design, line balancing, and productivity. For end product, the last stage, we have to manage the delivery issues, uh, issues related to the channel of uh, distribution, inventory, and also the quality. So those are the common issues that we have to deal at the later stage. So those are the example of activities Okay, ranging from the uh, input stage, uh, the transformation stage, and also the output stage. To create and produce goods and services, all organization typically should have at least to perform three essential functions. The first one is operation function. This is the core function. For example, in fast food restaurants, the kitchen section that make a burger, for example, is the running, is the department that run the operation function. How about university? The lecturers, 
Kung do the teaching part, basically are running this operation function. Another example in transportation, for instance, airline industry. The airline crew, for example, those who involve directly in transporting people from point A to point B, those are basically running the operation function. Beside the core function, we do have departments that support the operation. Marketing, for example, is the supporting department and the marketing function is to identify the customer need and requirements and then to generate and stimulate demands. Another supporting department is finance and accounting department. This function of the department is to, to track and to monitor the company financial performance, the financial health, paying bill, uh, deal with the salaries, issues, and etc. So that is a very brief uh, ideas of uh, operation concepts. Okay, and then uh, some of these uh, common activities in operations. And then the last one I've mentioned about uh, the three essential departments that we require to produce products. Next, we will see the differences between the goods and the services, the important characteristics. Okay, now let's see how good and services are different. First is in terms of tangibility. Goods, smartphone for example, you can touch and you can hold because it is tangible. Services, on the other hand, beauty treatment for example, is intangible because to know how good and how bad the uh, beauty treatment, you have to experience that. You have to consume that. Okay. Second characteristic is that uh, the consistency of product definition. Goods are normally produced in a standardized form. For example, Samsung handphones that I have is basically the same as your Samsung handphone. It is identical and that is why for goods we say that it has consistent product definition. Whereas in service, the product definition is very inconsistent. The beauty treatment for example that you get may be not be the same as my treatment. The nature of the treatments depend on many factors such as age, skin profile, unique individual preferences. So the way we define is totally different depending on the individual. Third is the issue of quality and productivity. For goods, easy for us to measure quality. Why? It is because of standardization. Let's say we take one dimension to compare. Size, for example. When we compare the actual size of the product, we compare with engineering specification, for example. Then we can easily detect is there any discrepancies in size. If there is a discrepancy, then we can claim that there is no quality because the actual one do not follow the specification. For productivity measurement, since the production process is standardized, the input factors such as amount of time and material will be standardized too. Thus, we can compare two identical products. For example, how much time and how many material used 
to produce both product if product one require less input compared to product two then we can conclude that the productivity for product one is better than the product uh, productivity product number two whereas for services it is difficult to measure quality and productivity because the input factors are not standardized the requirements are unique among individuals thus the direct comparison cannot be done precisely what is the degree of automation for goods the production process is easily to automate why because of the standardization whereas for services it is not easy to automate because different customers have different profile and preferences thus we have to approach them differently using different set of skill and knowledge the fifth one uh, the separation between production and consumption for goods production usually separate from consumption customers only can buy products and use a product after production completed since the production of con and consumption happen at two different time the customer interaction is relatively low whereas for services while the service being produced it is consumed at the same time for example you get the dental treatments while the dentist perform the treatments at the same time you consume the services thus the customer's interaction is relatively high okay guys that's all for the brief introduction uh, related to operation management. Uh, see you in the next video. Uh, I will touch something more deeper, especially related to the scope of uh, activities in uh, operation. See you then. Bye-bye.